is a lesson is about factoring polynomials using long division. Now, you haven't done long division since probably third grade. And I'm going to remind you, one of the positives is that you're way smarter than you were in third grade. You might not have gotten it back then, but you're smarter now. You really are. You're way smarter than you were. So if I teach you long division now, you might just like be like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I had trouble with that. This is really easy. Okay. So I'll remind you how to regular long divide with just numbers. And then by the end of the hour, we are going to be long dividing things like that. Things that have variables. We'll be long dividing things with variables. Now, in case you think, oh, this is not, like, this is so stupid, I'm never going to have to do this again. Actually, it's on the ACT test. Is it going to be on your ACT test? I don't know, because you get 60 out of 200 topics. This is one of the 200 topics they can test you on, is can you long divide polynomials, okay? And after today, you'll be able to. Honestly, by the end of the hour, people were, fra were, were tracking this pretty well. Like, most of the groups had it. All right. And I did say groups there. I'm going to group you up again because I want you to have somebody for your first call for help. All right, so people in rows one and two, etc. I'll pause when we get in group. Okay, so we're going to start by going back to yesterday, and it was called divide and conquer. Or another way to say it is it was called uh, factor by grouping. So I'm going to draw a little line there, and I want you to just ignore that part of the problem. You group the first part and factor it and then you're going to factor the other part. I'm going to pause for a sec while you try factoring that first part. All right, by now. Some kids really have a hard time factoring. They just don't know what, what can factor out of that. There's no number that factors out, but there's an x. In fact, there's not just an x. There's an x squared. Get the x squared factored out. I'm going to pause for a second and see if you can do that. All right, then I will go a little faster. So this has to be an x, because if I multiply it back out, that times that has to, make, has to make x to the third. And then I go minus 5. There we go. Hint, if that was an x minus 5 in the parentheses, I betcha that when I factor the right side, it'll have an x minus 5 in the parentheses. Because they're supposed to match like that. Yes, question? What if they don't? What if they don't? Then you're doing it wrong. Okay. <laughs> it's simple. You'll make them work. All right. So what does factor out of 6x and 30? We're factoring this part right here. 6. Just 6. And then what's left? x minus 5. That times that, that times that. Just checking it. And yeah, that works. It equals 6x minus 30. Okay. Now, if these two are the same, which they are, then... Those are called the greatest common factor. And so they, they are in common to both terms. Get how that's a term and that's a term? Because they're separated by a plus sign here. So there's two terms and they both have an x minus 5 in them. So factor it out to the front. And you have x squared plus 6 left. Raise your hand if you were able to do that. Okay, that's called factor by grouping. Uh, and to get the real roots, that's easy. That's this kind where you just go x minus 5 equals 0, x must equal 5. You get a normal number. If it doesn't have an i in it, it's real. But this other one's not as easy because it's x squared plus 6 equals 0. And pretty quickly you realize you have to do the square root of a negative. Does that mean you get to just stop and say, oh, I don't square root negatives? No, you actually have to square root the negative, and you use i. And your final answer on this one, when it's done, will have an i in it. But I want you to finish the job. That's where a lot of people can't do it, and then they get that problem wrong on the test. Let's see if you can do that. Final solving there on the right-hand side. Get this solved. And hint, there's got to be two answers because it's x squared. There must be two answers or you did it wrong. Some people don't know that a plus minus actually means two answers, so. Okay, so people asked, how did you actually get this thing, this part right here? Well, this x minus 5 came because they had both had an x minus 5. How do you get the x squared plus 6 part? It's because if you factor something out, you take it out of this and you take it out of that. It's like what you have left. 
Do you see what I have left there is an x squared plus 6? That's why this was x squared plus 6. All right, another question. Yes. And that is, oh my gosh, I get that question every year, every time, because it's a good question. Why isn't this squared? That's the question. Because when you factor something out, that's what we're doing here, is we're factoring it out to the front. Things that get factored out don't get squared. Let me prove it to you. 2x plus 4. That's a simple one. You should be able to factor that, right? What goes into both of them? 2, and you pull it out, and did you square it when you pulled it out? No. What do you have left? x plus 2. How do you know that was right? Because this times this is 2x, and this times this is 4. Notice, when you factor the simple one, you don't square it. So when you factor a complicated thing, and you get this x minus 5 to move to the front, you do not square it right there. There are kind of two of them. Here's the way to think of it, Miss K. There's kind of two of them because I'm going to take this and times it by this, and I'm going to take this and times it by that to get my final answer. That's how there's kind of two of them. But you do not want to put a squared right here. That would be bad. Okay. So what I asked you to do was finish this part. You square root, square root, to get absolute value of x. I hope you remember that. Equals, and please don't put a plus minus right here. There is going to be two answers when I'm done with my absolute value. So now I have square root of negative 6, which is i root 6. How many of you did that part right? Okay, awesome. And then I need two parts. x equals i root 6 and x equals negative i root 6. And I'm totally okay with you saying at that moment, you need your absolute value. But after you're done with the absolute value, I'm fine with you combining them and saying plus and minus i root 6. Okay, that was a little intense. But there's your imaginary answers. How many of them are there? No, there's two imaginaries, and then how many real answers? One. For a total of three answers. So here's the thing you could do to check yourself before you wreck yourself. You know that this is a third. That means you better have three answers here. A lot of times kids will only have two answers, and it's guaranteed wrong. Can't be right. You get what I'm saying? You're going to have three answers if it's x to the third. So I have one answer written in right now. What are the other ones? x equals i root 6, and I'm going to say x equals negative i root 6. And I totally could have put them together and said plus and minus i root 6. That would save some space. So I'll do it, and I'll emphasize the plus minus by making it blue there. That's two answers, though. Got to make sure you understand that's two answers. Okay. There's an in-depth one. Here's just a one more quick one. Can you do factor by grouping? Can you really? This time I don't want you to compare with your partner until you're both done. I'll pause for a minute while you factor that by grouping. You do not have to go all the way to the end and get the answers. Just factor by grouping. Okay. Divide and conquer. It's a lot easier to not try to factor this all in one step. You break it into two parts. It'd be kind of like if you had to fight two people. Wouldn't it be really a lot easier to distract, get one of them to like run over there somewhere so you could just fight one at a time? Because it's a lot easier to fight. It's a, it's a classic military strategy to divide the army into two parts and then to defeat them one part at a time. Okay, so anyway, this part, you're going to get the x squared out of it. And what do you have left? Oh, wait. There's more. What else could I factor out? A 3. A 3x three squared comes out. And then I have x plus, what? 2. And then over here, what comes out of both of those? 5. And then what do I have left? x plus 2. And if you didn't have x plus 2, you should be like, uh, what did I do wrong? Because something's not working. Because these have to be the same to keep factoring. Now, that part comes to the front, and you do not square it. And then you put what's left. And I want to make sure I really understand why you get what's left. When you are factoring, you are really dividing by that thing. And that makes it cancel. Cancel. And what do I have left? That and that. 3x squared plus 5. 
And one of these roots I can just see and it's negative 2. And the other one I'd have to write out a big equation and solve it. But I know you know how to do it. It just takes a long time. All right. So now we got to get to the new stuff. The first thing I want to do on the new stuff is plain old-fashioned long divide. 3 goes into 73. Do you think 3 goes into 73? I don't know. I just take it one step at a time. Probably not. Would you agree that it goes into 7 twice? In case you hadn't done this in a long time, you need to do this with me. Don't just watch me. Do it one step at a time. Now, I know some of you are doing this way. I can tell you that that way won't work. It won't work for polynomial long division. And so you need to learn it this other way. And think of it as, again, think of it as a challenge. Maybe you know two ways of long dividing when we're done. Does 3 go into 7? It does. And I know you. some of you are like, this was so hard when I first learned it. Get that out of your head. This is not that hard. It's just, does 3 go into 7? I think you can do that. And it's just a whole bunch of little steps. And then 3 times 2 makes 6, and you draw a line and subtract them. Do you remember that? Awesome. And then 7 minus 6 is 1. And then what do you do? Do you just stop? No, we got to deal with this 3. So you bring it down. And then you ask, does 3 go into 13? How many times? 3 times 4 is 12. Make this the opposite. Remember that, because we're going to have to do that in polynomial long division, is make this the opposite. Remember how you think of it as subtracting? It's really making the 12 the opposite. When we have 2x squared plus 5, we'll have to make it the opposite. Anyway, and then I have a 1 left. That means it didn't work. Get what I mean? It didn't, it wasn't a factor. If the question is, was 3 a factor of 73? The answer is no, it wasn't a factor, because I can't go 3 times something makes 73. At least I can't do it with a whole number. Hint. Do you get this as a remainder 1? And it's okay for the teacher to have taught you that it was a remainder 1. What I really wish they would have extended in elementary school would have been this, but I think it would have maybe blown people's minds. The answer to this, then, is 24 and 1 third. So that means that 3 times 24 and 1 third will equal 73. So does that make 3 a factor? No. It means... If you use fractions, you can make anything work. So when we say it factors, it has to come out nicely with no remainder. All right, let's see if you really got that. Does 7 go into 4,062? It might. It might not. Follow this through, and if you get stuck, please ask your partner and say, I never learned this stuff. Help me. <laughs> That's how you'd start, the very first step. Okay, i got to keep moving. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to teach each step. If you got lost along the way, then pick it up wherever you got lost. All right, I'm going to start by subtracting here, and I get 5. And then I can't keep going because 7 doesn't go into 5, so I bring 1 down. Anytime you can't keep going, you bring 1 down. Does 7 go into 56? Yes. Yeah. 7 times what? 8 is what? 56. Oh, my gosh, I'm done. No, I'm not. i got to bring down the 2. And now, does 7 go into 2? What? No. Now, we could get decimals here, but that's not going to be useful for us when, we come, when it comes to the uh, polynomials because they don't have decimal forms of polynomials. Don't worry about that. We just take the 2 and say, first of all, if the question was, does 7 go into 4062, you'd say, no, it doesn't because there's a remainder. Or if they said, is it a factor? You'd say, no, it's not because there's a remainder of 2. And here's the key. You'd say, no, it's not a factor or not a factor, and you have to prove it. Remainder is 2. If you don't tell me that the remainder is 2, you haven't proven it. Because you might just look at it and go, mm, I don't think it works. So I'm going to say, no, it doesn't factor. you got to prove it by showing the remainder. Okay, so if you don't give the remainder, you don't get credit. Yes? Uh, the remainder seems to But then you're going to, it's sort of going to be implying, okay, this is 2 sevenths. I get what you're saying. 
Oh, oh, hold on, hold on. Okay, hold on. So let me back up a step here. All right, so once I said, as soon as I said uh, 7 doesn't go into 2, I should have put a 0 up here, okay, and then said add 2 7s. There we go. Okay, but either way, that's not something I need from you, and I think it'll only confuse you. I just wanted to show you a little more advanced thing about fractions. Just say the remainder's 2 and you're done. Because I'm afraid kids are going to think, it works. It works, because this times this equals this, but that doesn't mean it's a factor. It just is a cool thing, but this isn't a factor all of a sudden, because I made this into a, a fraction or a mixed number. All right, so that answer was no, it was not a factor, because there was a remainder at the end. Okay, let's get to slide number three, I believe. Just answer the question. Is 7 a factor of 83? And again, like I said, you can't just say, hmm, no. You have to say no because the remainder is blah. I'll pause for a second while you try that one. Okay. Should have said 7, 83. 7 goes in here once. 7. Subtract. Make it a 1. Bring down the 3. Does 7 go into 13? No, but you can't just stop there. 7 goes into 13, not nicely, but it does go in. 7 goes in there once, would make 7, subtract it, and the remainder is what you need. The remainder was 6, so the answer is no. There's a remainder of 6. Raise your hand if you had that one right. Awesome. Then, you have remembered how to long divide. At least, almost all of you. I'm not certain about all of you. But, if you don't get that part, then you need to go back and watch YouTube videos on a long divide or something because you got to get that part later. Okay, you can always ask me after class or when I give you the work time and stuff, but there's not that much work time today because it's a hard lesson. All right, now we're going to move on for those of you that get long division into what can we do when there's polynomials involved. Okay, get to this slide. First of all, some terminology. The one that's underneath there is called the dividend, and the other one that's on the outside is called the divisor. The way I remember that is the dividend is in the den. You know, like a bear crawls into the den to like, or a fox crawls into its den to have its babies. All right, the dividend is in the den. The quotient is the answer to a divide problem, right? That's, that makes sense. The top one, you've heard that word quotient before. I know you have. The dividend's in the den. All right, if I was going to do this one, this is one more long division problem uh, with numbers. I don't think we need it. I think we should just get into the... Uh, actual ones where there's polynomials involved. All right, you ready? Actually, I should check on that. So how many of you think we should do one more? All right, I did get five hands, so I'm going to do one more. Would you please do one more long division? And I'm going to pause for a second while you try one more long division. Make sure you got this down. Okay, 18 went in here once. 18. Subtract them. 10. This gets a little weird. 18 going to 10? Mm, no, there's not enough there. So i got to bring something down. And that's 108. I know it's a bit of a pain, but you got to like try to see how many times it goes in there. And if you don't have enough, you'll be able to tell. Like if I put in a 5 here, I'm pretty sure that's not the right answer. Okay, that would make 90, and that means I have like 20-something left, 28 left, and that means, wait a minute, I could have done it another time. So anyway, this takes a little bit of Guessing and checking, but I hope I think it came out to six, right? Okay, so six times eighteen. I gotta go off to the side and go six times eighteen. Six times eight is forty-eight. Six times one is six plus four is ten. One oh eight. It hit exactly one oh eight. What does that mean? There's no remainder. That means it is a factor. And if you find one that is a factor, you say yes, and you have to prove it. And you say this. Eighteen times sixteen are the factors. Instead of saying, no, here's the remainder, you say, yes, and here's the factors. 18 times 16 makes 288. Okay, so that's one last one with numbers. Here's one with variables. And I'm going to go x squared plus 2x minus 3 is the dividend. So it's in the den. 
and usually it's the bigger one is in there and the smaller one's on the outside. Now, you get how they're set up in a long division. What was our first step? We'd always like say, does this go into that kind of thing? And we'd put a number right here, right? Now, if you were just like playing around in the dark with this and going, well, I guess I can try a 2 there. Then you'd take this times this and this times that, and it would be 2x minus 2. Did that, did that match up really nicely? No. What could I have put on the top that would have made it match up nicely? Yes. X. Y. Because now x times x makes x squared. Ooh, that matched up nicely. And you know what? All you have to do is get the first term to match up. Because then it'll cancel. And then your problem just got smaller. And then you keep going. Okay, so x times the negative 1 makes negative x. Draw the line, and here's the most common mistake. People remember that I was supposed to put a negative here. But they forget about how there's two terms, and you also have to make that one the opposite of what it is. You get what I just did there? I made this negative and this positive. Basically, both of them have to get hit by a negative. You could think of it as distributed negative, like this. But you've got to remember to hit both of them with the negative. Now, that's what we do, right? We subtract them. And so the x squared minus x, and that makes 0. Good, that's gone. You don't have to write 0. This just cancels. What do I have left? 2x plus x is 3x. Please don't change that in your head to subtracting again. Then you would be changing the sign for a third time. You don't want to do that. Final, bring stuff down. And then you say to yourself, self, what should I put here? What times x would make it work nice? A 3. I'm going to put a 3, and I have a choice of a positive or a negative 3, and you always make it match exactly. So I'm going to use positive 3, so I get positive 3x. And then it has to multiply by the other one. 3 times negative 1, negative 3. <gasps> it's working out. Minus and plus, and now they're opposites, and I get a 0 remainder. And can I say the answer is yes, because it has a 0, zero remainder? Close. The answer is yes, it is a factor. And how am I supposed to prove it? By saying what the factors are. x plus 3 and x minus 1. And do you get, we just factored this the really slow and painful way? All we did is factor it. You could have factored it the other way. So why would I make you do this? Because by using this method, you can factor things with 14 terms if you want to. You can factor things that are immense. No, you won't have to do 14. But, but you will have ones with up to six terms. In other words, you might start with something like this. 6x to the 7th minus 4x to the 6th plus 2x to the 5th minus 4x to the 4th plus x to the... Do you get what I'm saying? You can factor that. With long division. Yep, it makes you want to just quit and give up. But instead, think of it as a challenge. All right, move on to this one. Not that one. This one. That's got four terms. We'll just slowly ease you up. It's kind of like increasing the weight in the weight room. Like, okay, you could lift that. Well, try to lift this. Can you lift that? Well, then we've got something even heavier. I like to lift. I lift about twice a week, and uh, I can I can use those 50s, the big dumbbells. I can use the 50s uh, for like bench and you know things like that. Uh, I cannot curl the 50s, but I can do the 50s. That's the highest that I've done. But there's ones in the weight room that are up to 100, 100 pound dumbbells. Holy crap! That weighs more than some of you in a dumbbell. <laughs> I thought so. So, yeah, there's hard problems out there, and you're not all in the same place. Some of you barely got long division down. I get this might be tough for you right now, but we need to move you up through the weights. The dividend is in the den. Now, 
I'm going to start with who's smart enough to know what to put there? 3x. 3x squared. Because that way when I multiply it by the x, it'll make 3x to the third. And that's a good start. Keep going from there. See if you can do it. I'm going to pause while you try this one. Okay, let's go a little further. A 3x squared times the 2 made plus 6x squared. Most common mistake. People put a negative here, but they forget to put one there. Let's see if that was you. If you had 19x squared, you did that. All right, we should have 13x squared minus 6x squared makes positive 7x squared. How many of you had a 7x squared in yours? Then you didn't get fooled by that. Good job. Next. I need to put in some number here that I can times by x to make 7x squared. Sounds like 7x. 7x times x makes 7x squared. Oh, wait, I need something else. I need to bring one down. So 7x times x makes 7x squared. I'll use a different color here. And then 7x times 2 makes 14x. What's the most common mistake? Negative, negative, yep. And that makes this negative 4x. Then I bring down a minus 1. And now i got to figure out what goes here. That times x has to make negative 4x. It's a negative 4. But wait, you say, Mr. Server, it's not going to work. Some of the problems don't work. This opposite, opposite, makes negative 1 plus 8 is 7. That's called a remainder. That means the answer to the question, is this a factor of that? The answer is no. And what's your proof that you know and you're not just saying, hmm, I don't think it works. You have to like actually prove it. And the answer is no because I know that the remainder is 7. Do you get what I mean about, like, you could just guess that it doesn't work and then get credit for an R3, which is like, no, we're not going to let you do that. You have to say, no, and I know it doesn't work because the remainder is this. Okay, cool. You have learned if you just got that right. How many of you actually got that one right? Sweet. You've learned to long divide with polynomials. One of the hardest ACT skills that there is. Not the hardest. The hardest is uh, the trig stuff. All right, try this one, and I will tell you ahead of time, this one will work if you do it right. It'll have a remainder of zero at the end. See if you can get to it so that it has a remainder of zero at the end. I'm going to pause while you give that a shot. So, first step, x squared, x squared times x, x to the third, x squared times negative 5, negative 5x squared. Ooh, that worked out really well. Opposite, opposite, they're gone. And then I just bring down the 2x and bring down the negative 10. You can bring down two things at once. And then I say, does this go in? Yeah, if I put a 2 here and I put a plus 2, 2 times x makes 2x, 2 times negative 5 is negative 10. Oh, it worked perfect. So what's the answer to the question? Yes. It is a factor. And what are the factors? x minus 5 and x squared plus 2. There, you learn to polynomial long divide. And if that didn't work for you, honestly, go back and listen to this recording again. And then it'll be uh, like Inception, sort of, or like deja vu. If you really didn't get that the first time, watching it again might help. All right, so your homework for tonight is a worksheet. On that worksheet, all I'm asking you to do is the odd problems. That cuts it in half. I know that makes it like less practice. I, there's multiple problems. I know. I'm, I'm just, I'm just saying that's for sure half as big as it would be, right? So just get those problems done. 
my concern is that you practice tonight, not that you do an hour of practice tonight, but that you, that you do about a half an hour of practice. And I think cutting it in half will make it reasonable. Yes? Uh, you should Dropbox everything. From now on, I'm always going to have a Dropbox for every assignment. Uh, and whether or not I correct it in class, it will be irrelevant. I will always have you Dropbox it from now on. Okay? Yes? I gotcha. Okay. If there is a missing term, you get all this was to the three, to the two, to the one. That all worked out nice. If there's a missing term, you have to put in zero to hold that place. Let me give you an example. Let's say that there wasn't any x to the fourths. And then there's x to the thirds. And then there's x squared. And then there's an x. And then there's a one. What am I missing? I'm missing an x to the fourth, so you put in a 0x to the fourth. I know that's weird. That's called a placeholder. And then everything will work out nice. If you ever have a missing term, like there's no x to the fourth, put in a placeholder. Thank you for reminding me about that. That's, I'm going to actually uh, add that to my lesson for next hour. So thanks for a reminder. Yes, go ahead. Okay, if they said x equals 2, do you get you can't put x equals 2 here? That's not going to work at all. So what do you put there? If it says x equals 2, that's the root. There you go. That's the factor. You got to get the difference between a root and a factor. This is called a root. And this is called a factor. You got to use the factor form. Thank you also for reminding me about that. And I know that would have been in the next problem, but I wanted to kind of wrap up so that you could have a little bit of time to work on your worksheet. So your homework is the worksheet, but just do the odds of it and get it done. I have uh, a strong feeling that people that don't practice this are going to fail this next test. Like there could be lots of D's or F's if you don't practice this stuff, because this is not easy. If you try to go in cold to that test, it's not going to go well. Okay, that's all I got for you.